Manchester City 2, Leeds United 1. And Janusz Michalik, after 83 minutes, Man City are 2-0 up. They get awarded a penalty. They're on cruise control, yet it becomes rather nervy after that. And I can't imagine Pep would have been too happy, despite going four points clear in the changing room at the end of the game. Yeah, he wouldn't have been happy just just because they didn't put the game away, right? Uh, he wasn't happy with Haaland giving away, and he was right. At first, uh, you just assume that Gundogan's going to have a hat-trick and score a penalty, and then it's nice and easy. Uh, uh, seven changes in the game, uh, not even breaking a sweat throughout the game because they weren't challenged uh, basically at all by Leeds United. But ultimately, I think uh, uh, Pep will have a point to make. So listen, I'm the boss. I tell you guys who's going to take penalties. We all know who takes the penalties and why the drama. And the drama really wasn't there because that game should have been five, six, maybe even seven. Yeah. Uh, you know, Erling Haaland had uh, two sitters and probably two other very good chances to to put that away. Julian Alvarez early on as well. Uh, so one of those games where uh, I think Pep is just going to talk about uh, maybe the penalty situation and nothing more. A lot of talk in the build-up to this game. Janish. It was a game that City were expected to win. It was a routine fixture at home for them against a, a lead side that are in free fall. Sam Allardyce has come in to try and stop the rot. And a lot of talk pre-game was, is he going to rest Erling Haaland? Is he going to pick someone else? Because Real Madrid takes place on Tuesday. Haaland started. So the question is, why was Haaland still even on the field in the 83rd minute to say to Gundogan, you can have this penalty? Yeah, I think he trusts him. He's strong. He's powerful. I think he's in form right now. He wants him uh, to continue to be in form. I think, as you've seen, as as I've mentioned, I think he probably want him to uh, to get that, uh, that goal to keep the momentum, uh, the good momentum going into the Real Madrid uh, uh, game because he's been on uh, cloud nine. No questions about that. Breaking all kinds of records, and and I just think it was just one of those situations to to him. It was more important to to uh, to maybe keep the other. Or the rest of the spine uh, uh, somewhat uh, rested. And that's, of course, uh, Ruben Diaz and, and Rodri as well. So uh, I, I'm sure just, you know, it happens all the time that, you know, you maybe uh, you monitor the player throughout the game. Anyway, he felt that this, go this game was going uh, nice and easy, which it was, as I've said. No sweat broken uh, for most uh, most 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 of the game. So, uh, you know, that's just my guess why why that happened. Uh, yeah, they, they it's, an, it's, it's an unnecessary risk. Janish, because if he gets hurt, the way that he plays football, he's a wonderful player. He gives he's a hundred percent to do everything. He was putting his head in where others were putting his boots in this game. The biggest game of their season now is against Real Madrid. This game was in the bag. Why didn't they pull him off, take him off, say that's it, you're done, you're not getting your goal today, but we want to wrap you up? Because you can talk about Ruben Diaz, you can talk about Kevin De Bruyne, you can talk about Rodri and the other key players. Their main key player. Is Erling Haaland, and that you know, was unnecessary I mean, I today. That, that's true. I don't have any other explanation that I gave you. I mean, you may have to ask, ask Pep, you know, Pep uh, uh, that. But uh, as I've said, I think you know there's a risk in everything in life, uh, you know, in anything. And I just, uh, you know, uh, this season he's been uh, relatively healthy. And as I've said, uh, I just think that this game. Uh, didn't give Pep Guardiola anything to worry about other than the fact that it was a bad defensive uh, error towards the end where there was a little bit of drama. Kanji didn't head that ball properly, didn't win it properly, I should say. Uh, and and just, I mean, uh, I don't know if I saw much of a risk at that stage. But yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, anything can happen. Okay, let's bring in Rob Dawson from ESPN FC, who's at the Etihad and has been filing for ESPN FC dot com tell me rob am i unnecessarily stirring a hornet's nest when there's there's not even a story here or does part of you agree that erling Haaland should have been rested as far as the 83rd minute is concerned when the penalty awarded and already been substituted ahead of the game on tuesday in madrid in the bernabeu what do you reckon i mean, i think that the, there are probably two sides to this i can fully understand why some city fans may have turned up today and thought a, Erling Haaland shouldn't have started the game because they've got Real Madrid on Tuesday. And B, should have possibly been taken off early in the, in the second half. I, I think perhaps what Pep might say is that he rested players who were more in need of a rest, the likes of Ruben Diaz and Rodri. And he didn't feel he could rest his entire starting eleven before Real Madrid. He needed to keep the, the core of his team on the field to, to win the game against Leeds because obviously they're still in a, in a title race. In terms of 
why didn't he come off early? Why was he still on the pitch when, when the, the, the penalty decision was made? Again, I think Pep Guardiola would possibly have said that at half-time to his players, the minute that that third goal goes in, you're all coming off and we're going we're gonna to make changes and we're going to rescue before Madrid. The fact that that second goal didn't arrive, Pep gets slightly nervous at, at sort of 2-0 and, and wants to keep players on the field. I think that if that third goal had come early in the second half, that Erling Haaland would have come off very, very quickly. Um, I think also with, with strikers, there's possibly a, um, an issue with, with rhythm. Do you want to keep the striker in a, in a rhythm? He's been scoring goals. He's been playing really well. Did you want to leave him on and, and maybe you know, help him get that goal? It's one of those things. You know, if, if, if he takes him off and then lead score again at the end and it's 2-2, um, he gets lots of criticism. If he gets injured, he gets lots of criticism. Um, I, I think the Pep Guardiola would probably say that he's come through the game fine. They've won the game. He's fit and ready to go for Madrid. Then he's made the right call. I almost think that the biggest risk was not taking Kevin De Bruyne out. Uh, for one reason being that he's missed a, he he's missed a game, uh, you know, last game due to slight uh, slight knock. And and as I said it before, I I think he's the most important player for Manchester City, even more important than Erling Haaland uh, uh, in a bigger scheme of things. So uh, so maybe that was the biggest uh, one for me. Now that I think about it, uh, otherwise I think we uh, Rob and I agree on that. Rob, we're all experts after the event. I mean, Pep, who? We're the managers. We know best. We're the ones that sit in our armchairs and castigate on a manager who's won so many things and is the best in the world. But no, we, we know best. That, that's the beauty of football, isn't it? Ultimately, Man City made that harder than they should have done. I think they've got one home clean sheet in the league since Newcastle mm. at the beginning of March. That, that's another issue. And the, the weird thing about it is City don't give up that many chances, but they give up percentage-wise goals that you would suggest the chances that they give up, which aren't many, wouldn't result in, in goals. Is, is that any concern for Pep ahead of facing a, a potential front three of Benzema, Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo? There is a, there is a slight concern there. I mean, I, I think obviously City are playing well enough that they will go into those games thinking that they're going to beat Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that this season, a lot of the attention has been on Erling Haaland. And the question again and again and again to Pep Guardiola has been, is Erling Haaland the man to win you the Champions League? And he's kind of said, well, it's not really. He's not really. Because even though he's scoring a lot of goals, City have always scored goals in these big Champions League games. They've they scored goals against Real Madrid last season. They scored goals against um, Monaco, against Tottenham um, in, in Champions League ties that have been knocked out. The, the, the problem that they've had is not keeping them out of the other end. They've had these chaotic spells of five and ten minutes where they've leaked two and three goals and, and in the end it's cost them and that's why they've gone out. So Pep Guardiola has been, particularly before the, the buy-in quarter-final, was very, very quick to say that they've always scored goals in these games. Scoring goals in these massive Champions League games has not been the problem. The problem has been defending. And so it will be a slight concern that today Leeds haven't really offered very much, but they've had one sort of half chance at the end. Um, mm -hmm. Manu Akanji hasn't dealt with a ball that he should have done. Leeds have scored. And the last five minutes have been quite nervous here when in a game that probably should have been put to bed um, you know, long before that. So there is a slight concern. And I think that, you know, if Pep Guardiola goes on to win that first Champions League with City this season, I think if he's really, really honest, he will turn around and tell you that the, the reason that they, they've won that is not because of Erling Haaland's goals. It's because of a more cohesive defensive unit. They will win the Champions League because of the way they defend, not because of the way they attack. What did you make of Leeds under Sam Allardyce? Fireman Sam's come in to try and put out the flames. This was always a, a bonus ball. He never expected to get anything. It's the last three that he's hoping to take something from. But I thought they gave a, a reasonable account of themselves today, Rob. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, Sam Allardyce's blueprint for keeping a team in the, in the Premier League is to, to build it on clean sheets. And, and mm -hmm. really, they were very shaky at the back. They could have been sort of five or six nil down in the first half an hour. And, and lucky, really, that they came up against a City team with Erling Haaland, who had a little bit of a, an off day. That said, after half time, they were a lot more organised. Um, they were a lot better in transition. They they looked like they were almost on the verge of creating something even before that goal right at the end. I think probably there, there was enough there to give the travelling Leeds fans a little bit of hope that they may be able to pick up the points needed to, to stay up. I mean, like you say, you're absolutely spot on. I don't think that Sam Aldice, when he saw the fixtures that he was coming in to deal with at Leeds, thought, well, City away, that's the one that I can pick up points. I think really it was a bit of a free hit. If they got something great, if they didn't, you know, no one would blink an eye. The big game really for them is is away at West Ham in a couple of weeks. Mm. Um, and also um, on the last day of the season against um, Tottenham at home, um, they're really the, the game that they should be targeting. They probably need one win, 
Um, you know, four points would be great, but they need some points from somewhere. And, and certainly today, you know, coming to the Etihad Stadium against a City team who are, who are looking to win a treble, that's not really the, the game that you should be targeting to, to win points. Final question to you, Rob, because I know we've got to get on to other games. You've got to go to the press conference. What has been City's biggest strength this season? I've heard it said that when they've swapped and rotated, they're not weakening their side. They're bringing in similar quality. When Arsenal have done the same, the quality that they're bringing in hasn't been as good. Has it been that? Has it been the goals of Erling Haaland? Has it been the play of the likes of Rodri and Ilkay Gundogan, who today was outstanding? Has it been Kevin De Bruyne? What has it been ultimately? Has it been a culmination and a combination of these things that means that City are likely to win another Premier League title? Yeah, I mean, it's probably been a combination of, of all those things. You can't escape the fact that Erling Haaland has scored an unbelievable amount of, of goals. The way that he plays, the type of striker that he is, has also allowed City to play in a slightly different way. Um, you know, they, they've still been able to create chances in the way that we would expect a City team to do so, you know, getting the ball wide and, and, and into the box. But it's also allowed them to go long every now and again um, because he, he's that good of a versatile centre forward. Rodri, the form of Rodri, he's been absolutely unbelievable. And, um, he's barely missed a game this season. He, he stayed fit. Um, it, it's why it was so important that he was rested today ahead of um, ahead of Madrid. Um, the squad is is an interesting issue because you know last season when they were still in a lot of competitions, they went they played in a, um, a Champions League quarter final against Atletico Madrid and then played an FA Cup semi semi final against Liverpool. And Pep Guardiola just said he, he didn't have the numbers, didn't have the size of the squad to be able to cope with that size of game in the mm. space for a week. And mm-hmm. um, and the squad certainly is is bigger now. You've got players like Julian Alvarez who is able to just sort of dip in and dip out whenever they've needed to. And he's had a fantastic first season in England, but no one's really noticed because of, of the form of Erling Haaland. I mean, having a player like Julian Alvarez, who can come in and score goals like he did at, at Fulham the other day, you know, goals that ultimately win you games in the Premier League. I mean, you can't really, um, mm-hmm. you can't underestimate the size of the, uh, an impact like that. And that is a combination of all those things that have just made City, they've, they've taken it to a different level this year. And, and that's why they're in the hunt for a treble in mid-May, when perhaps we haven't seen that in the last couple of years? Uh, I, I still think that the biggest strength of Manchester City is Pep Guardiola, uh, mm-hmm. uh, to keep the players motivated, to keep them on side, to keep them hungry. Uh, I mean, it's easy to say that, of course, when you add a piece like Erling Haaland, that's true, not many teams can do that. But as we've seen, they can they can function without Erling Haaland and, uh, and do just as well. But, you know, players like Ake, John Stones coming in in a different position, improving all those players. Somebody like Gundogan, who will likely leave, but still look at I mean, he's getting better and better as, as the season uh, goes along. Uh, Jack Grealish, who I think we all complained that wasn't doing enough. And, you know, I remember a time early in the season where we felt that maybe the price tag uh, on him uh, was a little bit too much. So I continue to think over such a long period of time, not to lose that hunger, and we've seen it happen to Manchester United. It's happened to Liverpool, whom they had to, uh, with whom they had to uh, fight last few years. Uh, that motivation is a massive thing, and 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 you still have to be able to coach it the way he does, and 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 make the team tick the way he, he does. So I continue to think. It doesn't matter who plays, right? Today we've seen seven cha- changes and absolutely one-way traffic because you almost have to forget about the last five or mm-hmm. whatever minutes. Uh, so to, for me, it's Pep Guardiola. Final question to you, Rob. Do you expect Pep to name the strongest lineup that he has? I think we've seen it before a couple of times in the Arsenal game and in the Bayern game as well, where he's got Bernardo Silva coming in, maybe Mares on the bench, Julian Alvarez on the bench, do you think it will be the, the team, the tried and tested one, his go-to team on Tuesday at the Bernabeu, or do you expect maybe a surprise or two? No, I, I don't. I don't really. I mean, you never know with Pep. He could do, he could do anything. He likes to sort of um, say that he, he invents these wonderful, amazing tactics before these big Champions League games. But I think today he's given a really big clue as to his team against Real Madrid. He's, he's rested um, Rodri, Ruben Diaz, Bernardo Silva, Jack Grealish. I would expect all of them to be back in the team yeah. at the Bernabeu on, on Tuesday. Um I would expect it to be that team, you know, um, the, the team that did so well against Arsenal at the moment, as well as his squad is functioning. He has quite a, a strong um, core of, of 11 players who in these big games have done particularly well. And um, it would be a surprise if, if there was any um, changes to that against Real Madrid. OK, Rob, thank you. And Rob and his full-time report available at ESPNFC.com and he'll have the post-match thoughts. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.